It's 10 a.m. in the Emerald Forest Reserve in Ikoi Oshun, a 350-acre private protected area situated on the banks of the Oshun River in southwest Nigeria. Committed to ensuring that both members of the community and the forests are sustained is Professor Aki Abayomi, Lagos State's current health commissioner. As a passionate environmentalist, he's been managing this farm and forestry reserve alongside his family since it was established in 2003. Over the past two decades, Professor Abayomi has not only fiercely protected and restored this ecosystem, but he's been able to develop a successful tropical agroforestry model, as he strongly believes that this is one solution to intense climatic shocks. Well, so agroforestry is what our ancestors practiced. You know, they didn't go about chopping down trees and clearing miles and miles of land to plant. They planted in between spaces, in between forests, which allowed the forest to exert its protective effect on the farming environment. So the birds that live in these big trees will swoop down and feed on the insects that are trying to eat your corn or your cassava or your pepe or your tomato. Uh, but if you don't have any trees, then, you know, the ecosystem is balanced. So what we notice now is that when we, when we look at farms around us, they plant pepe and tomato and corn and they don't do well because that there's too many pests, too much fungus, because there's no check you know, checks in the system, in the ecosystem. So now what do the farmers do? They go and buy expensive chemicals from town and you see them spraying their corn, spraying their tomatoes because there are too many insects eating their, their tomatoes and their pepper. Why are there too many insects? Well, because all the birds have disappeared. Why have the birds disappeared? Because the forests have disappeared. This ecosystem is home to a range of wild flora and fauna and according to Professor Abayomi, wildlife populations here have increased thanks to two decades of conservation. Several animals rescued from the illegal wildlife trade are also released back into nature here, like this pangolin who after months of rehabilitation is ready to make the Emerald Forest his new home. By protecting the forest, um, animals find this place as a sanctuary because this is where they find their food, their peace and their protection. But additionally, we're creating this place as an animal rescue sanctuary. So um, animal lovers and wildlife enthusiasts find live animals that are on the wet market or on the side of the road that are meant for bushmeat. They buy them and they bring them to a number of enthusiasts who will look after them for a while and then bring them here. And then we release them into this natural Reserve. A butterfly farm facility is currently being developed in the Emerald Forest. Butterfly farming can generate revenue as butterflies are raised for planned releases in zoological parks or gardens all over the world. Now butterfly farming is not really a new concept, but it's majorly new in Nigeria. In parts of East Africa, a lot of farmers are into butterfly farming, where you get to farm your butterflies. You rear them and they are packaged and sent abroad. They're exported. Now, this is a form of revenue generation for the farmers. Apart from that, we also are about setting up training groups for the farmers. Like if we go around, we'll see that most of the forest cover around this reserve has been cut down. Most people don't know what the 
damage they are doing to the environment. And we as a body, we are trying as much as possible to reorientate them, to re-educate them. What are the other ways through which they can earn an income? Initiatives like this have improved forest conservation in other African countries like Kenya and Tanzania. When complete later on this year, the Emerald Indoor Butterfly Garden is expected to be one of the largest on the continent. The scale of bushmeat hunting and consumption in Nigeria today is unprecedented, and the illegal wildlife trade is of great concern to Professor Abayomi, who is committed to a One Health strategy as promoted by the WHO. The One Health talks about you know, human health in the context of environmental health and agricultural health. So you're only as healthy as the environment in which you live and the food that you eat. You know. So if your environment is polluted, your water is polluted, the air is polluted, uh, the food that you're eating is full of chemicals, hormones and pesticides and things like that, then all that accumulates in the body you know, and that makes you sick. Although protected, the Emerald Forest Reserve still faces serious threats. Right on the banks of the Oshun River, the water flowing through the forest is affected by increasing levels of contamination. Evidence strongly suggests that illegal gold mining is a primary cause, with metals reportedly detected in these waters across the state. This is not only reducing aquatic life populations, but damaging this important food and water source for millions of people as the Oshun River connects to several southwestern states. Regarding specifically this illegal mining, um, so it's further up north uh, and they use chemicals to separate the gold from the soil and then they come and wash it in the river and of course those heavy metals go into the water and then they go into the food chain, the aquatic food chain and the human food chain. So we've got to pay attention to that and I think the, the Oshun gov state government as well as other governments around Nigeria where this is happening and even across West Africa in Ghana it's a big problem. Um, governments have to pass policy and I know for sure that the Oshun state government is taking this very seriously. The Emerald Forest Reserve is the only protected forest in Ikoyoshu and deforestation in the rest of the community has been widespread for many years. This has increased the severity of flooding, which has consequently eroded roads connecting the community to urbanized parts of the state. The federal government is currently in the process of repairing these roads, which is good news for the Emerald Forest. Not only will this reduce hunting and logging threats, but it will make the reserve more accessible to visitors and researchers. Well, my hope is that we continue to expand and that we get a lot of more people interested in this kind of model of agroforestry. So climate change is already on us, plus environmental degradation and destruction of our forests means that Nigeria is going to dry up faster than you know. And we already seen that effect in the northern parts of Nigeria where the desert is creeping in, we're getting less rain, the river is lower than usual. So these are the things that are happening and you know, as responsible citizens, everybody's got to get involved in preserving the environment. And when you come here, we say, come and touch the wild and feel it for yourself. Having initially started off as a hundred acre plot, the Emerald Forest Reserve continues to grow. Through the promotion of agroforestry, the Abayomi family continues to prove that forests and agriculture can coexist without environmental harm. The hope is to continue to grow and restore the rich biodiversity of Ikoyoshu by working with local communities and a strategic approach to coexistence. Leila Johnson Salami, Arise News.